guys, thanks for coming back. Uh, on today's video, we're going to do another shell removal, general maintenance, and just kind of looking over uh, one of my locomotives. And today it's going to be the Lionel 2350, the EP5. Uh, I picked this one up after doing some repair work for my uncle on some of his uh, Lionel engines, and he gave me this as payment for it. Now, when I got it, it had a lot of issues. It needed a lot of work. Um, it kind of ran, but there was some things that I had to do to it, which we'll take off the shell and we'll get into in a little bit more detail. Okay, so here we are. We've got the 2350 on the bench and we're ready to dig into it a little bit, see what's going on, make sure the aperture is clean and all of that kind of stuff. It's got plenty of grease on the gears. So where we're going to start is getting this shell off. So what's holding the shell on is just one single screw. Okay, so that's it. Just the one screw on the one end and the other end is just a tab. So you just lift it up and slide it off. And there you can see the tab and the loop that it went through on the other end. So that's it to take the shell off of this thing. Not a lot to it, very simple. So we've got our relay for the horn. This is the whole horn assembly and this is where the battery sits. Every time you uh, stop running for the night or for the day, always get that battery out of there. Um, it just helps save on all of the contacts. The battery is, you know, I've seen so many of them exploded in here and you spend forever cleaning these contacts and cleaning all the acid residue out of there so it's always a good idea to remove that out of there next up we've got our e-unit <clears throat> and for those of you that are don't know what this is the e-unit actually controls the direction of the train forwards and backwards uh through some electrical magic of some sort i don't know exactly how it works i just know what it does and then of course the motor the last thing here so where we're going to start, <clears throat> we're going to start with the motor itself. I'm going to take the cover plate off. We're going to check the uh, armature inside and see if it needs any cleaning. And if it does, you guys are probably all familiar with these now. These are my green 3M scotch pads that I use to clean most everything on my locomotives. Uh, Excellent dollar store find for a buck or two. You get about six in a package. Let's put that there to hold my sign up. <clears throat> and they work wonders taken off of built up carbon, dirt, some surface rust without being too abrasive. So let's get on to this cover. So the only thing holding it down, there's two screws here, one here and one here. So we're just going to lift those out there's two so we are going to just lift this straight up the brushes will likely fall out and there they are right there so we'll just get them out of the way and you've got your armature here okay now these ones you can just lift straight out it's not like the steam engines obviously where they've got the wheels in the way blocking it these can just pull straight up and out and here's a one of your bearing washers so you want to be careful not to lose that so we'll just put that over here for now in the dish and we can start cleaning our armature so once again you just get the your little abrasive pad a little scotch pad get them all cleaned up And since we can, we can check the other parts of the armature. Just make sure if there's any little surface rust building up on them. Or if you just bought the locomotive and there's surface rust already on it, it's not a bad idea to just give it a little rub. Get some of that off. Be careful not to score up the windings, though. You don't want to screw up those. I think if you get the coating off of them, that will definitely affect how this works. But if I'm wrong, I'm sure someone in the comments can correct me on that one. And there we go. We got a nice shiny armature face. We can just put that off to the side. 
We can have a look at the brushes. They're not too bad. A little bit of carbon buildup. We'll just give them a quick wipe down also. Just like that. And that is good to go. So that's all set. Now, in most of the other videos, I've talked about being very careful about how much you move uh, anything that has the original wiring because it can possibly break. This one still, it's been rewired. These are all brand new wires that I had to put on. Um, as I said in the beginning of the video, this thing was in pretty rough shape when I got it. It did have its some of its original wires, but the solder joints were absolutely terrible on it. And there was a couple of spliced parts, but I managed to replace all of that wiring and also replace the wiring in the E unit as well. So it's all fresh stuff in there, but I still want to be careful. I don't want to bend things too much, especially this coil wire. It's still original and it could break. So what we're going to do, once we got the armature clean, we're going to have a look on the inside of the cover and it's really not bad at all. It's still in pretty good shape. If anything, just going to give it a quick wipe. There we go. That's all that needed. And I think I'm going to grab a toothpick and just clean out where the brushes seat in these little brass holders. Okay, so we got our Q-tip. I'll just flip this over, give it a bit of support. And I don't even have to put anything on the Q-tip. You can put a little bit of contact cleaner if you want. Um, if this is a new purchase for you and this is the first time you're diving into this and taking the cover off to clean and inspect it, you probably will need a little bit of contact cleaner because likely there will be a heavy carbon buildup in here as there often is. So that's that. We can look down at where the bearing rests and where it runs and it's looking pretty good. It's not a huge buildup of grease on there, but we can still clean off some of the old stuff. And I can put a fresh shot of grease on there. Just a little bit, don't need a whole lot. Just like that, and we'll be good. You really don't need to cake it on at all. It's not necessary. So I still have one washer down in there, and here's the second. I'll just kind of sandwich together like that. And we'll slide that whole thing back onto the armature, and then we can just drop it back into place. So all you're doing is dropping it right back down into the hole there, if you can see that on the camera. And it will engage in the gear. And there it goes. Okay, so that's all back together. And now we can put the brushes back in to the plate. And what we're going to do to put the cover back on is there's two posts on the motor here. And two holes on the back cover. Just line those up and then slide the whole thing back on. So there we go. Get it more in the light there. And there's one post, two, and away we go. So that's all set up. I can put my little brush tension spring back into place. And set it back in the groove of the brush to make sure that the brush is properly being seated on the armature. And that's what all those springs do. They're just putting tension down on the brushes to keep them in contact with the, uh, with the armature. So there we are, we got the motor all back. Brushes are cleaned, armature's cleaned. That's all good. We got the bearing plate greased. Now, if you wanna separate, if you need to separate the motor from the wheel assembly, it's done by this screw down here at the bottom. If you pull this screw out without supporting the motor with your hand, the motor will just drop and possibly stretch and break all those wires that are attached to it. So you just want to be mindful of that. Let's take that 
that off. There we go. So here it is. <clears throat> and this likely is not going to be included in most of the locomotives people get. It's the grounding spring. Um, mine originally did not have it. I had to go on to Evil Bay and purchase that one fairly recently, I might add, too. And we can have a look at our wheel assembly. You can check the gear and make sure it's, you know, not chewed up, well lubricated. This one's looking fine. You can tell by giving it a spin, it's also moving really well. So there is quite a bit of old lithium in here and again when i got this it was absolutely packed with junk um i had to do a little bit of a clean on it i'm going to do a little bit more just for the sake of this video here so i'm going to get my q-tip back and i'm going to scoop some of that out let's get that out of there i'll just replace it with something fresh because again, with all of this old grease comes old carpet fibers, old pet hairs, you know, memories of Fido's from long ago. So we just want to clean that all out. We don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And then there is a plate here as well, if you really, really need to get into it. This screw here will lift this whole section right off and you can get right onto the gears themselves. And you can have a look, all the teeth are all in good working order here. Everything's fine. Just got a lot of excess lubricant. So we'll wipe off some of that stuff. And again, the gears teeth look really good. So that's a good sign. Wipe off some of this off the side here. Okay, so now I'm going to put a shot of grease back onto that, put the cover back on, and move on to the next piece. And again, not a whole lot. You don't want to cake it in, there's no reason to. And here we're good to go. Okay, so now we'll put the cover back on. And it's easy to line up because there's two posts sticking out of this casting, two holes here, and obviously there's the screw as well. You can lift that out if you want. Line those posts up to the hole and the whole thing basically falls into place. And we can tighten that screw back down. Like that, there we go. So that's all ready to go back onto the motor while we have it out we can check the motor's gear as well it looks to be in good shape you can hit this with a little bit of grease if you want to as well you can do something quick like this just a little shot like that will be plenty and then we can set the motor back in so as you can see there is a shape in the casting here of the bottom of the motor that will match up with this little cutout on the wheel assembly itself. So to drop it in, you might have to turn the wheels a little bit to get the gears to line up so that the whole thing just drops into place. There we go. Oh, see, I already forgot my ground spring. Take all that off. Put your ground spring back on. Lord knows we gotta have that. And we'll just drop that down in. There we go. Drop the screw back in and tighten it up. All right, so motor is back attached to the trucks we've got some new grease in the gears down there we've got the the brushes and the armature is all cleaned up you can check your battery contacts here and obviously the door at the bottom 
to remove any corrosion if there is any. Um, the bottom door on this one I believe is a repro so it's still in pretty good shape. You can, if you want, sometimes if you're having problems with the horn, you might want to check the actual relay for it, but this little contact can get pretty dirty sometimes. So one way to deal with that is to take this whole section out. One screw will take this whole top piece off. So you just undo this one here. And you want to be careful with it. You don't want it to completely fall apart. Because if you're not paying attention to the stacking order, you could cause some trouble. So when I do this, I kind of keep it all together as best I can. There's a little button down here. And that can get a little bit dirty. This one's not too bad. But again, you can just get your little scotch pad. Give it a quick little swipe. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on that at all. It's a very thin piece of metal. And tighten the whole thing back down. The other way I've done this, because I have actually taken this whole thing apart and cleaned off the solder joints at one time or another. Um, take a picture of it. Take a picture, remember the stacking order, remember which contact was where by having a photograph reference. And then you can take it apart completely and you don't have to worry. So we've got all that back together. That's all cleaned. The E-Unit. Um, this one, you can get to the drum a little bit underneath here. There you go. There's the drum. Okay. So these copper pieces on the side, that's what you want clean because that's where these fingers connect to it and help do the whole backwards and forwards thing. This one's not too bad, but if yours is a little bit dirty, there's a perfect view of it, you can get one of your Q-tips, spray it with a little bit of contact cleaner, like so. And just, Kind of give it a little bit of a rub here. Okay, and if you need to move to the next section to do it, I will find my small flathead screwdriver, which is right there, and you can actually push the cylinder to the next position. It's not going to damage anything and clean off the next area. And we got that barrel cleaned off so the fingers have can make good contact to it now. So that's it for the 2350's maintenance. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the shell back on this. We'll send her back out to the test track and give her a run. Just just in reverse of taking it off, hook the tab back under, put the lip shell back on, you can drop your screw in, all right, that's all together. I think actually the last thing we need to do is drop a battery in there so that we'll have a horn. We're ready to put the 2350 back on the track and send her around. All right, see you over at the test track.
So there you have it, guys. The 2350 back on the track. Uh, all cleaned up, and lubed, and ready to go. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, please hit the subscribe. Hit the notification button. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you later. Bye now.